Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm going to start a new topic that is language modeling. So in this language modeling, we are going to talk about what is mean by language modeling and the users of that language modeling and the other thing is about ngram model. So before getting started with this video, if you are new to this channel, then please do subscribe to our channel. And if you are already a subscriber, then please do watch whole video and hit that like button. Now let's get started. So now let's see what is language modeling. What is language modeling? Now let's understand with an example. See that you are playing a game. What is the main aim of that particular game is you have to guess the next word. See, we humans can guess the next word. Maybe you are having some practice with that particular language. So you can guess. No problem in that. But when it comes to the systems, how it is going to predict the next word is by using language models. So what this language models will do is it will predict the next word in the given sequence. Okay. Um, see some examples of uh, language models is Llama 3. Uh, you can see it in your WhatsApp. I mean, uh, I think you uh, all of you have got this AI in your WhatsApp also. So when you open it on the top, you can see Meta AI with Llama 3. Llama 3 is nothing but a language model. It is used to generate the text and it will also used in understanding what the user has passed. So that is nothing but a language model. So now let's uh, see what these sentences are. Language models are crucial for various applications in human language technology. Human language technology is nothing but NLP. So this plays a crucial role in NLP. They help predicting the likelihood of word sequences based on training data. We see if it comes to us, we will have some practice through that particular language. So we can able to guess, but uh, it is not the same with that systems also, right? It is what we are doing is we are going to train that particular systems in order to predict what comes next in that particular sentence so this is how a language model works first it is trained and then it is going to predict what word comes next okay the purpose of language models is to calculate the probability of a sequence of words appearing in a language how they are going to do this by calculating the probability. How they are going to calculate the probability, we can see that in ngram models. Okay, so now let's see what are the uses of language modeling. So the first one is speech recognition, and the second is machine translation, and the third is information retrieval. That the example of this is nothing but a chat GPT, and the fourth is authorship identification. See what is mean by authorship identification is see you are writing some assignment and you copy pasted something from different resources to your, in your assignment and your teacher or your lecturer might read it they wanted to check whether this particular student has copied it from the other website or not so what they will do they will copy paste that particular thing and they will paste in the authorship identification system so what this author author authorship identification system will do is it will identify the author of that particular para what you have copy pasted okay so this is what is done by authorship identification you can uh, generally say it as plagiarism okay and the fifth one is document classification you have some certain document right so you have many papers in that so you want to classify it so for this particular paper you will give some heading and for other paper you will give another heading so that is nothing but a document classification so these are the uses of language modeling okay now let's see about ngram models in natural language there are endless possible word sequences of various lengths 
calculating the exact probability of any given sequence directly is not feasible so i have said that how language uh, models will predict the next word is by using the probability by calculating the probability but is it going to calculate for all words i mean is it going to calculate or uh, the probability of each and word each and every word that is occurring in that particular sentence no right it is it is not a good way you it is not a good way it is very complex when it comes to system so in order to handle uh, this particular thing what they are going to do is they are going to divide the given sentences into many word sequences like uh, take this particular uh, sentence only which sentence take this sentence why it is coming so take this sentence only what they are going to do is they are going to divide this particular sentence into words okay so they are going to break down this particular sentence into words and they are going to calculate the probability of the next word how they are going to calculate the probability of next word based on the previous word so this is the previous word this is i mean this is also its previous word these all things are nothing but the previous word so let's start from the first see ignore this one ignore this one so da da is not dependent on any other words so you can just say the probability of this particular word is p of w1 okay now the probability of occurrence of the second word is dependent on the first word so you can say the probability as the probability of the word 2 that is nothing but this word is given by the probability of word 1 okay now and the next uh, word you can see of so the probability of this third word is dependent on the probability of i mean it is given by these two words the same thing the probability of this word is given by the previous words so it continues like this and you can see that the probability of wt is given by the previous words the previous t minus 1 words okay so it goes on up to this and the last word it want to predict right so the probability of this teeth word i mean this is teeth word is dependent on the probability of this words previous t minus 1 words okay still they are saying that uh, the probability of calculating the individual words is still complex so in order to simplify that they are going with ngram models so what this ngram models will do is they assume that the probability of a word depends only on the previous n minus 1 words ignoring the rest of the history this is called markov assumption the formula for an ngram model is this this is the formula see what this ngram model is saying is instead of calculating the probability of t minus 1 words you can just reduce it to n words i mean if see if there are uh, some thousands of words before the occurrence of this particular word you can't uh, calculate uh, the probability for each and every word it is complex instead what the ngram model will do is maybe it will just take the previous n words only instead of taking the thousand words maybe it can take only 500 words okay so this is nothing but an ngram model i mean whatever the assumption it is following that is called as markov assumption so what is the formula for this ngram model is c uh the probability is equivalent to the probability of the occurrence of this word with the previous n minus 1 words okay now let's understand this depending on the length on n we distinguish between unigrams see this ngram we can call it as unigram when n equals to 1 what what it means that n equals to 1 and n equals to 1 means there is only a single word in the given sentence if there is only a single word in the given sentence then you can call it as unigram 
see you can see here the probability of each word is independent of any previous words see there are no other words before this particular word or there are no words after this particular word so it is independent of these words okay that's why you can call it as unigram and the second one is biogram so by by is nothing but two so what it means that the given sentence consisting two words so the probability of occurrence of the second word is dependent on the one word only one word it is dependent so that this is known as biogram and when it comes to trigrams maybe in that sentence there are only three words and this the probability of occurrence of these third word is dependent on the previous two words so this is a trigram and uh, and it goes on like that that four grams five grams four grams means the fourth i mean the occurrence of the fourth word is dependent on the previous three words okay here you can see the last point an n-gram model is also known as n minus one order Markov model because it can only considers the n minus one previous words to predict the next word i have already said that that instead of considering the whole words given in the sentence it will only consider some n minus one word so it is useful in predicting the next word of the given sentence so this is about the language models and n-gram models so in the next video we are going to discuss about another topic so until then thank you thank you for watching this whole video and don't forget to like this particular video okay thank you